Good morning podcast and welcome to a new episode on the Pierre T. Lambert show. I hope you're having a beautiful day and that you're ready because today we have a guest that I have long awaited for. His name is Manny Ortiz. Manny is a portrait photographer and YouTuber that has been on the scene for many years and we've actually been kind of following each other's tracks or like parallel tracks for a long time and it's awesome to have him on the conversation because we're gonna dig into his past, how he went from being a cop to being a YouTuber photographer, what practices he has in his life to overcome anxiety or to reinvent himself constantly, and the role and the changes of photography in the space of social media, of YouTube, and many, many tips that I think will help you. Also, if you're slightly socially anxious or you're feeling like everyone's looking at you when you pull out a camera in the street, when you're traveling and you want to take photos, well, I think this episode will be also for you because we tap into that discussion, being shy and actually still trying to get the best of our photos. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's welcome Manny to the podcast. Good morning, Manny, and welcome to the podcast. Good morning to you, Pierre. Thank you I'm for having me on. I'm super pumped to have you uh, because we've been kind of following each other in the same path for many years, but we have completely different backgrounds. We also have different personalities, way of shooting. And I think there's so much intertwined in, in how we work, what we see and where we come from that I thought we absolutely need this to do this episode once in our life, at least because it's been long, long, long waiting. So Manny, can I, can I start with a little tricky question or well, not tricky, but I'm just curious. Ooh. Okay. Were you a cop before? Yes, sir. Yes. T That's tell us sir, more you, no. because because I'm I'm like cop YouTube. Mm. Like I didn't know, you know. It so I thought it was I thought it was kind of I, I didn't think it was like a, a like an ordinary thing, but it turns out that a lot of cops are photographers. It turns oh. out that a lot of people in law enforcement, yeah, a lot of people in law enforcement have like an outlet. So um, so that's what I did. Yeah, I was a I was a police officer for four years, and then I did photography on the side. Uh, long story short, I went viral. One video, one video went kind of viral, and I built on that, and that's how it all started. How what was? Do you remember that very first moment where you decided to actually create a video? Do you remember where you were? What was your mindset? Dude, I got the funniest stories with that. Like, I I made I made a video shirtless. Uh, when I bought the Nikon D six hundred, I made my first photography video complaining about the oil spots, and I did a shirtless because back then I was jacked, I was pretty big, so I did a shirtless video, and people were roasting me in the comments, and I thought I was great, but that was my first one. <laughs> okay, let's. I, I love that. Sorry, I can't <laughs> so, is I'm so this mad video I still? A, a, is this video still live? What? Is it still available that video? No, I deleted it. I'm so angry because I would have been, I would have already made a reaction video to that, man. Oh man. Yeah, it's deleted. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 the one year old YouTuber deleting his stuff versus a five, ten year old YouTuber who's like, I should have never deleted anything. Oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> um, okay. how did you get to that idea of even shooting a video? <laughs> You know, so I've never been a social media guy. I've never, I just thought it was like, it, it, I thought it was like a very, um, uh, what is it? Is it exhilarating to mm -hmm. put something out on, in the internet for people to just, mm -hmm. random people to just see or comment, you know? So had you heard about that or how, how, what inspired you kind of, man, just tinkering, you know, just boredom, you know, just trying to do different, just messing around. I just yeah. literally just messing around. Yeah. Do you remember what year that was? Man, that was like 10 years ago. 10 years. So yeah. 2012, 2013, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. A long time ago. Oh, wow. Wow. And yeah. um, so how was, how was, how was that at, at work for you? Because I'll give you an example. Personally, when I was working as an engineer and when I started to really tap into my passion and, and get into it, it was very hard for me to concentrate at work, not in the, yeah, kind of where I was trying to just get better at photography, even though I was at work, I was thinking about it, what I'm going to do after. And I was, you know, trying to plan myself. How how was that process for you? I'm, I'm slightly curious as to, did, did you like wake up one morning or you were in the car one morning and you're, you're looking at someone pass by with a camera and you're like, I want to be a photographer. I want to do photos. 
Yeah, it was a Christmas sale going on. And um, you could get like two Rebel T3s for like $500 or $400, something like that. It was a good deal. Me and my buddy like cars. We're yeah. like, oh, let's take pictures of our cars. Mm -hmm. So we got these Rebel T3s. That's literally how it all started. It was a Christmas sale. Yeah. And, th and then you're like, let's go take photos with your buddy. Yeah. Just, and I started taking photos of everything. And then slowly, you know, I got in, I got caught in the YouTube game where I'm like, okay, now I got to upgrade, 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 upgrade. So I kept just upgrading and learning from that point on. What, when did you, do you remember like, um, because it's funny when, when you start actually progressing, I think that's the interesting part. You, you think you have to upgrade, but you also upgrade your skills. Sometimes maybe it lags behind the gear. Who knows? It depends on everyone. But usually, at least for me, you, the gear came first and then the skills came after, uh, definitely. And wh how was it? What was your progression? Were you doing it outside of work? Or, I mean, yeah, what, what was the daily or uh, weekly schedule like for you? So at that time, I was security guard for a school. Yeah. And what I would do is I'd, I'd go in the computer lab and I'd print out a bunch of lighting diagrams and photography like blogs or diagrams. And I literally sit at my desk and just study it like a straight up nerd. Just there studying lighting diagrams and just like I literally, I studied it on my own. Like I took my own initiative to it. I never took a photography class in my life mm -hmm. and I didn't know anything about photography or anything, never, you know, and I just took the initiative and just, yeah, I, that's how I did it. That's awesome. That's, uh, when, when did you feel that you get, became slightly good you you can't answer never because i know we're all modest but <laughs> when did you feel that you would slightly become better or and maybe you want to go into it you know a little more what's funny is that we all have moments i feel like we all have moments of like brilliance um yeah. aka sometimes um luck you know yeah. sometimes we, we we can we can we can make some good stuff and then sometimes we'll feel bad about ourselves because mm -hmm. we don't, we feel like we're not. So back then I felt many moments of, I, I was actually proud of a lot because, you know, everything that I created with light or for example, was not like something that I ever, you know, it was all new to me, you know, yeah. it was all new to me. So I'm like, Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. And, um, but yeah. So I mean, but like nowadays I'm, I'm always like, I feel good. Sometimes I feel bad. I, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm more harsh on myself now than I was before. But, oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, I imagine your your standard got higher too. That's the yeah, that's that's the thing. So, so it's like you you the the thing that would fly and make you like super excited for two weeks after <laughs> it's like eh, yeah, doesn't work anymore. Do you um okay? T talk to me about that transition, like because if I'm correct, you you're not working anymore in that field. Uh, can you can you share like um the crispy details of your transition how? When did you start thinking about leaving and when did you actually make it? What, like, how did, how did it look like? And give me all the details you have that you can well, remember. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a really hard transition. So hard, you know, cause my mom, everyone that I, I was raised for like a traditional household where like, you know, safety net got a yeah. job. Like, this is not a job. Like what are you doing internet stuff? Mm. Right. Like, what is this? And I don't know about you, but I had, I never, I I never I I didn't know that you could make money online. I I was yeah. this oblivious to business. I was yeah. never into business or anything. So when I started make when I again um I started making YouTube videos on the side, just messing around. This is when Sony was on the up and up. So I mm -hmm. kind of rolled that wave a little bit. So when I got into Sony, I started making little videos here and there. People watched. Them. I was like, what the hell? People people were actually watch my stuff. I'm like it was so boring, you know. So like I was so awkward. So basically, I, I built on some momentum that that I. I built on some momentum that when everyone started po reposting my videos and then um, I remember that I came to a point where I was actually making more, a little bit more, I was making more money doing this, mm -hmm. creating videos than I was doing the police work. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, how, is this sustainable? Like yeah. I, I just really questioned if, if this was sustainable or am I making a mistake? Cause I worked really hard to get to the, to get to that point. But I was so unhappy with my job and the politics and all the shit that I said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to, um, I, and I had a lot of mentors actually. So I talked to Roberta Blake. I talked to Jared Pollan about mm. it. Um, even like I, I talked to other, other people about it. 
and they in, they encouraged me to do it. I was already like at over a hundred thousand subscribers. Um, yeah. So then I I pulled the trigger. I left. It was very 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 scary. But um, yeah, it's it's just like anything though. Entrepreneur. It's like everything's kind of like a, you know, it, it's a chance. It's yeah. You don't know what's on the other side. It's 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 a risk, and that was new to me. But I'm glad I did it. You know. Do, do you remember that first day you had no job and came in your YouTube job? Yeah, yeah, I remember the day that I was driving away from the human resources building, and I walked away with no job. I had no job anymore, and I I remember that feeling. It was very. It's one of those uh um one of those uh moments that you know you just don't forget. You know. Yeah. Yeah, what was it, the feeling for you dude it didn't feel i didn't feel free believe it or not you know i, was, I didn't I have curious. that feeling yeah. yeah i didn't have a feeling of freedom uh, of freedom like i i had a freedom uh, i mean i had a feeling of of just like like pressure like my back's against the wall now like i gotta yeah. i gotta make shit happen now like oh yeah. shit i jumped off the plane yep <laughs> better have the Oh, my parachute's not there. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm Gotta screwed. learn to fly now. <laughs> yeah, I know for real, dude. That's how I felt. That's that's fascinating because uh, I'm always curious. You know, I, I feel like the narrative around those is is very much like quit your job and then you know like you walk out free and you're like yeah and there's birds singing and like everyone you know rainbows and stuff. Um, I don't necessarily felt that way either i was like super nervous i was like what am i gonna do you know is this gonna mm -hmm. work uh tons of questions you know but in a way glad but you also feel that pressure you know it's like just because you enjoy something doesn't mean there's no pressure mm -hmm. um that, yeah. that's awesome that's awesome so how was um so you're you're basically telling them okay bye I'm going to continue that. Uh, can can you share how much like on average someone in your position would make like people in your positions like in just to give a perspective to people like or... law enforcement? Yeah. Like law I, enforcement I have and... no clue how much people yeah. make. You know, not that much. You know, you you start you start in the 40,000s, right? Come okay. out of the academy making in the 40 40,000 range and then after a couple of years after your probation and everything, you get bumped to, you know, maybe around like 60. Mhm. Mm you know, so make, yeah, around 60 K, then you hover there for a while for, you know, okay. for a long time. Yeah. I see. Increment bumps. That's interesting. So yeah, as a, as a freelancer, as a business, it's not like unachievable goals to get to the same level. It's not the same type of work, but uh, it's not like you're, you're some like BC or hedge fund manager, making 400 K I have to make as much to leave my job, you know, like kind of scenario. It's yeah, uh, that's really cool. I think, uh, yeah. That's that's so interesting. Okay, tell me, Manny, what's the biggest uh, challenge you would say with with this new phase of your life, or how 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 do you actually see it? Do you see it as a different chapter in your life, or you know, I I how do I describe it? I don't even know how to describe what this is. Um, I even I have I have I struggle to even call it a job, mm -hmm. but I so that's why I'm like, what what is this? So for me for me the way i describe this career or i say career i i feel like it, it's just like running you're running from an avalanche like an avalanche is is behind you all the time and you're running yeah. from it because you feel like you never you never feel accomplished you never feel mm -hmm. like it's the end it's like mm. it's it's the abyss like you know okay you're committed to making videos and being an you know an an educator, whatever the case is on the internet, on YouTube, guess what? You, there is no finish line. You know, mm -hmm. you may, you, you can stop and rest for a second, take a couple of breaths, but you're, you're going to keep running. Like, so I'm constantly running from that avalanche. And mm -hmm. I didn't anticipate that going into this. It's like, I can never stop. And mm -hmm. people don't, people don't understand, people don't realize that, oh, I want to, I want to do internet and make videos. But yeah, but what happens, like statistics show, like pe most people last like five years, you know? Yeah. Uh, on this platform and what happens when you're completely burnt out you don't know what else to do you know i've reached that point many times and um but you got to keep you got to keep reinventing yourself keep keep doing things it's it's not it's not easy you know it's not easy which, which is something i appreciated with your channel over time is that i've seen those moments when you try to reinvent when you try something different and maybe it works maybe it doesn't i don't know you're the master of your own stats but 
uh, a new channel, but you can see that progression. And, and I always admire that. I'm like, yeah, man, he's trying something different, you know, like, and it gives me a little push too, you know, it's like, oh, Pierre, don't stay too comfy, you know. Um, well, not everybody can be like Pierre, you know, and, and just, and be able to talk to the camera in public. Uh, I, just the way you, the, yeah, the way you operate, I wish I could, I wish I could harness that, man. Well, uh, we'll talk about that, but this is something I never even knew in the sense that I always knew it was difficult to talk in camera and stuff, but I, I was never aware of, uh, that, of, of the social awkwardness of being in public. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm, I'm grateful. I, I didn't, obviously you feel shy and you don't want to talk, but, um, yeah, I would say you made it, Manny. You can be in the middle of the streets now. You know what, man, with, with, the, with an anxiety attack waiting for me, an anxiety attack is waiting for me, my friend. That's funny. Um, and, and to everyone listening, just keep in mind, Manny shot a lot outside in the middle of the roads with lights, with models which I might even feel more awkward than you for that. Because so I would funny. have a model in the, model, in the corner and I would be like, everyone will for sure look at me if I have an umbrella or something, you know, that's like flashing versus if I'm just walking with the camera. Yeah, but but the camera is a safety blanket. So it's like because you stick your face in the camera and you're preoccupied, you're, you're, yeah. you're tunnel vision. So it's almost like you tunnel vision mm. on the camera. Yeah. I'm tunnel vision on the mm. camera in front of me and what I'm doing in my head, people are looking at the model, not me, you know, oh, or whatever I'm shooting. You I know? Never, so it's like, that's true. Actually, we never look at the photographer. Yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, <laughs> who's looking at, who's looking at me. You got a, you got a model in front of me. They're staring at her or like what's going on, but I don't feel like I'm center of attention. So I'm at comfort. And plus I'm like this, mm. whatever I'm, I, don't, I feel a comfort. but if I'm holding a camera in front of me, I have imposter, like that imposter syndrome starts to kick in. Like I'm holding a camera and I just imagine people are judging me like, who the hell does he think he is holding a camera like like you know like who does he think he is he's he's that he thinks he's important enough to film himself like what yeah. could what could he be possibly be talking about that's so interesting you know i have people i i hear all these voices of judgment so mm. like that, that's why i struggle do, do you know where they come from for you but like what? we all have our own stories with those do you know where those voices might come from for you well, I mean, it's just part of part of my part of my anxiety. I guess I just I'm one of those people, you know, that cares about what other people think. You know, that yeah cares about what people think about them. So that's something that I'm always I'm trying to battle all the time is stop caring. You know, yeah. that no one can no one cares. That's that social anxiety. It's that you you the feeling of like judgment, but mm -hmm. in reality, people are worried about themselves. You yeah. know, and so yeah. That's interesting. Uh, I was asking the question to see if you remember how early you you have that feeling in you or you remember having it, you know, like, I don't know. I can give you an example. When I was eight to I mean, all the times between age six and 10, 12, we had end of the year kind of like theater classes, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was a big show. You had to be there, you know, on the stage and doing the thing, etc. And every, I mean, most kids are like not feeling like it's an amazing time, you know, <laughs> or when you're being sent to the front of the class talking. And I remember as a kid, like feeling that like extreme, like, um, uh, how do you call that? Like stress of, of being like, oh my God, I'm going to be there. I can't, I can't mess up, blah, blah, blah. What's going to happen if people, etc. And in those moments, I also remember that as long, like you said, as long as you stay in your tunnel, it's fine. The voice, yeah. could, you, the voice has no time to get there because you're in the tunnel and <laughs> in the tunnel, mm -hmm. you're just trying to give your one line. But the moment you stop, then it's like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know if it's helpful anyway to, to be able to walk in the middle of the street and and speak to a camera i don't know yeah no everything that you do is gives me anxiety because I, I just can't do it um i can't do it uh i'm just the kind of person that i don't like people looking at me yeah. i don't like to cause i don't like to create attention believe it or which not which is a paradox right for a youtuber <laughs> it is it is it's very it's very weird and this is a, doesn't make any sense at all and like i to this day i still struggle talking to a camera 
Yeah. I've been doing this for six years. You, the moment I press record on the camera, it's almost like I forget how to speak. Mm. You know, yeah. sometimes I try to picture my friend in the lens or yeah. just pretend like a friend is asking me a question. I'm answering the question. Yeah, I have little techniques of getting away. But yeah, dude, I still struggle. To this day, I still struggle talking to a camera, Such let a alone outdoors. Technique. You just mentioned probably the most important technique that ever helped me in life which is imagining it's your friend. It's not a camera. It's not like people. It's like yeah. my best friend. It's this guy, you know, and I'm talking yeah. just to that one person. And that for me, that made it so much easier. And then over time, I integrated it more naturally, I would say. Not natural, but like more in the background. Yeah. Um, but also I noticed if I'm with other people, it's easier to be in the middle of the road speaking, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah i would say i would say it's easier to turn fully on. alone you know i if i'm I fully alone talk. no dude if i'm fully alone like i it's even hard for me to do street photography it's mm. even hard for me to pull out a camera and and take a picture of some because everyone's you know they're just staring at me it's just me and them and i'm just like oh yeah. you know like kind of awkward but yeah better in a group do you remember the, those dreams uh like i don't know people had those dreams they they would dream that they would uh, get to school in pjs or <laughs> naked <laughs> yeah i'm kind of I wondering know. it's almost the same feeling you know <laughs> yeah but it's yeah no yeah i think for personally for me it's uh, one thing especially with street photography or travel uh after a while i was like look pierre do you want to get those photos or not you know yeah it's like if you want to get that photo you i'm sorry but <laughs> i'm sorry you, you're gonna need your camera out there you know, and that that's the um, that's 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 my own thing. But dude, that's so interesting. So tell me about the um, tell me about modeling and how that got into because like you're taking really cool and and like trying new concept with with your models and I love that. And I remember when you were just out there in the streets. I think it was like one of the early videos. I re even remember watching your video about why you quit Sony ambassadorship. I think it was shot mm -hmm. outside if I remember, but it was, or there was a like bureau. It was on my couch. Oh, yeah, couch. Bureau. There's probably there bureau. was bureaus of you on the bridge. And I remember those and I was like, oh, look at him. And you were like a little further than me on that road. And I was like, oh, wow, he's leaving Sony and stuff. Um, okay, how, how did modeling, oh, so modeling, models get in the, into the picture and how did you get really deep, deep into portrait especially knowing you have that anxiety which means the i mean the interaction is not easy for most people so i actually started off doing cityscape stuff that was like mm -hmm. my my first thing i went i went out on my own in chicago and i did cityscape and i you know i did i did some pretty good stuff low-key i did some pretty good cityscape stuff and um but but then when i started taking pictures of diana at the time mm -hmm. i realized that this was more fun for me like for, mm -hmm. for me, it was more satisfying to get to to work with someone and get instant feedback on a, on a photo yeah. versus going out, you know. And so, yeah, I started taking pictures and playing with lighting for the most part with with Diana yeah. um, messing around. And that's where that's how I that's how I fell in love with uh, doing this, doing portraits. Yeah. And for context, for anyone listening, Diana is, is Manny's wife. Yeah. And uh, she's been in tons of videos and she's actually behind you right now for those who can see that. Oh, yeah. Um, wait, wait. And yeah, I've never I, <laughs> I've never met her, but she seemed awesome. And I mean, if she's down to play with you for that long, <laughs> she must be great. Yeah, she's the opposite of me, but opposite to track, you know. Really? Yeah, she's very extroverted. But, you know, again, that's just that's how you balance. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So yeah. what, what do you think is the hardest thing you're working on lately not in terms of projects per se but like what's the hardest balance you mentioned the avalanche that's always coming and what kind of tools or techniques have you found that help kind of keep the avalanche off but also just like pausing um that's a great that, that's a great question right there that's a that's one of those million dollar questions man when, when once you figure that out man this it won't be so it, this won't be as this won't be so hard what do i do i i just think i can i constantly remind myself that that because i'm not uploading there are not people out there like chewing off their nails like nail like oh my god when is manny gonna upload you know because mm. as a creator you feel like 
I I feel like I I feel like I owe my subscribers or the people that follow me content. I, I feel like I owe them this. So like I have mm -hmm. to do this to to stay in their, you know, to to entertain them or whatever the case is. And I I also got to remember that when my favorite creators, you know, when they when they don't upload for let's say two three weeks, and then they upload a video, and my I I wasn't there like oh man why 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 aren't they uploading? I was there like living my life and doing all the things. And when they upload, they upload right. So yeah. I remind myself to chill the hell out because there's no one there like like you know like oh my god oh my god when's the next one no no there's so i could just calm down yeah. post what when you know when when i post um but one thing that i have been struggling with that i'm constantly telling myself is over is the perfectionism part of creating videos because um i constantly like you know when you achieve a certain production value it's like how much better can i get and not every, you can't always do better and then i get pressured like if i make any kind of mistake i scrap mm -hmm. it all i put all this pressure on myself that i just go into paralysis and then i don't want to do i don't do nothing you know yeah and then um man dude there's so many there's, there's so many different things that and in and, and filming i also feel like i have to be emotionally ready to film like i i can't just be like oh babe i'm going to work all right it's 5 p.m let's say i'm not in the mood it's I can't turn on. I can't turn. Mm. I can't get the, the the gears going to film. I just like okay, today's an L. I'll I'll try tomorrow. Mm. So, um, yeah, there's a lot. That that's that's interesting. When when you're not in the mood or not feeling like shooting, have you found anything that can help you or practice um, plants, coffee, whatever that that can help you turn on or or it's nah, more like I need sleep and I'll see you tomorrow. You so that's the problem is that when I'm see, when I try to like force it, when I try yeah. to force it, like force, I'm going to say the creativity, when I force it, I end up like making my anxiety worse and making the pressure on myself worse. And I've, I've realized that I got to be okay with taking an L. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm going to, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, and I'm going to be okay walking away right now, understanding that today was just not my day and tomorrow can be better. So I walk away from it and I don't let it, I don't let it bother me as much. And I just try the next day, you know? Mm. Yeah. Do you also feel that sense that invisible pressure where it's like, if you haven't shot that today, that's it. But then you realize you're the one who created your own schedule, you know? And you're like, Wait, what? I can move it a day. It's going to change nothing. Of in course. My head. You know, yeah, that's but, me. Yeah, that right there. That's what, what I just said. Remember how about like, like I feel I'm feeling like uh, like I have to put out something right now for the people that are waiting. Yeah, there's no one waiting. You know, there's no one waiting. They they watch whatever you put out. The algorithm. Uh -huh. <laughs> the algorithm is yeah waiting. yeah. That's that's another one. That's another one. But yeah, that's I'm constantly feeling that invisible pressure of having to post for sure that's it. yeah that's awesome I, i i really wish like every single viewer could like hear that when they're watching our videos or just know what it takes and i'm not saying that in a way where like it's not it's not we don't love it it's more like well you know just be mindful you just clicked on the video before you like put a thumb down and and exit <laughs> or do whatever just like take a break and realize how many hours might have gone or like oh, how much people time spent on that. Um, I think it makes also for a more mindful viewer experience because if you compare movies at the cinema versus YouTube, you know, you, you don't think twice about a movie. You're like, wow, they put a lot of budget. There's millions of people that went into it. Uh, they spent so much time doing this and that. Then a YouTube video is, it's not like necessarily that it's easier but there's also a lot that's involved and i don't think as a viewer we have that you know it's more like scroll scroll and like click yeah which is which is what i tell myself when i i'm trying to be perfect and keep everything um make sure everything's perfect that perfectionism yeah. sometimes can can be can work against you because now you want everything to be perfect now you sound like a robot look like a robot And people are just desensitized to that now. They want to see real and they want more organic. So then I'm like, I tell myself, look, if I mess up right now and I just go off the 
it's probably going to be better for me. It's probably going to be a better viewer experience than hmm. me trying to be perfect, you know, yeah. or trying to say it perfect. So have have you felt that change in the audience over time? Where it, yeah, yeah, I noticed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've never been the great, the most polished person to be yeah. fair, but I have noticed that when I don't script and I sound, you know, like I do now, like a lot of stuttering and a lot of like, you know, filler words, like, oh, uh, whatever. Just, I sound like I'm talking to a friend or talking to a person yeah. and people like that. They're like, man, I like, I almost like you're having a conversation with me mm. versus when you script, it sounds more like, we're, it sounds, you know, more like a presentation. Yes. But so I, I guess I come coming off as like, this is a conversation and, and sounding like a human, sounding like it's or, an organic talk. It sounds, it, it, I don't know, at least I see a lot of people, it, people a lot of people like that. Yeah. You know, so huh. that's that's yeah, I, I feel the same way. I mean, I always try to keep a little bit of vlogging style just because I personally also prefer, you know, it, it seems more personal, even let's say a travel show. And you know what? Trina was reviewing one of the video from Japan. And then she asked me, she's like, you're not used to being filmed by someone else, are you? I'm like, well, except on certain trips, not, no, not too much. She's like, I can, I can feel when you, because it's like the rough cuts. She's like, I can feel it when you're speaking that you, you don't have the same friendliness or ease than when you're vlogging and you're alone or you're turning the video on other people, you know, versus more interview style. And I never thought about it. It's, it's interesting. And, and I, I'm like, oh, so I guess there is a place for that. And that's what, Yeah. I always love with, with your, your videos, it's always feels very friendly, you know, like, like we're like hanging out with, with Manny, you know, doing the thing, kicking cameras, asses, Canon versus Nikon versus Sony. Yeah. yeah the never ending debate. <laughs> the never ending debate. Hopefully they are, they can add a new brand so we can have more to talk about. We don't need, we don't need no more brand. <laughs> We don't need no more. No, yeah, with a brand that's like fully AI camera. So you just hold it. What do you think of that? You just hold it and think about your photo. And then that's it. It sounds like something Apple would do. Like with the glasses and stuff, yeah. The glasses they would do. What so speaking of, okay, let's 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 see where you're going with this. Um it's kind of a reflection that was having. Where are we going? for the next five, 10 years when it comes to cameras and also retouching um, and the experience with, especially with AI being absolutely insane right now and coming up more and more. So how, what's your prediction? You can take wild, wild guesses. It doesn't matter. Or, or maybe you've already sure. seen the trends emerge. Yeah, I think about this all the time, actually. I think about it all the time. What's next? What's next? What's next? Right? Mm -hmm. Megapixels already. Everyone already did it. Um, we got the 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 AK race, right? The hybrid race, and now everyone's making specialized cameras. They're making them more specialized. They, they, no one can make the ultimate hybrid camera. You know, they still because they have to make money, um, mm -hmm. and have to differentiate them. But um, I think, I so basically, what I feel like what's coming, you know, so it's just incorporating more of this, um, incorporating more. What is it? The A the AI, the what it's it's incorporating the okay, well, I you know iPhone photos, what what do they call those? That's um more of that more oh, of that uh, autumn. Yes, com computational computation, computational. I feel like it's it's gonna it's gonna become more computational okay. where where you know just imagine yeah, man, I don't, it, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard to think about, man, but I just feel like it's going to get more, it's going to just end up being more computational. It's going to like, think about, think about using the F4 lens and then yeah. having like portrait mode in your camera where now you mm -hmm. can, you know, with, with, or like with the thing about a stock lens, right? You buy a cheap camera for like 800 yeah. or something with a cheap lens and, and the camera has like portrait mode built in so that you can add, you know, blur or whatever. So yeah. adding some of those iPhone computational tricks in there, you know, maybe yeah. it just, I mean, I, am I asking for too much, but I mean, improving the software so that we can like, imagine just like immediately getting it on your phone without having oh to go God, through that yeah. whole crappy process. Um, 
Well, no one ever does it because it's so bad. It's such a hard process, but just computational, man. And and slowly but surely, but I also think it might go a little bit backwards too, because what happens is that photography gets boring and dry. It's really boring, mm. you know. It's and and what separates all this computational photography to actual photography is the tact, you know, the experience of it. And that's why yeah. like people are going back to film the slowly but surely, you know, there's only so far. So it's a little mixture of both, honestly. You know, it's a little mixture of both. Yeah, because I've seen that shift towards back towards film also. All the Fuji cameras or the Leica, everyone's like Leica, Leica. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I see what you mean. It's like, I don't know if you ever followed Formula One, but there was a moment when they allowed certain things or and it become boring. Not boring. And it's slightly sad to say, but as a viewer, you kind of want some action. You know, you don't want it to be defined within the first five minutes of the race, you know, and then be like, okay, they're all following their own programs and, and that's it. Maybe if one makes a mistake, it will be there. Um, yeah, photography kind of definitely feels like that at times. And that's why I remind, personally, I remind a lot of people, it's not about the photo so much. It's really about the adventure of making that photo, you know, it's uh yesterday you showed me i was in your studio you showed me a, a sandbox and i asked you if it was a cat litter and you mm -hmm. <laughs> and your mm -hmm. answer was like no it was the photo shoot you had you had in mind uh that you wanted to do but like just starting that process getting it getting prepped maybe testing it this is the fun part for me also mm -hmm. I, is that is it the same for you or or are you or is it just a photo Yeah, I said this in my recent Fuji video. See, like the A7R5 with all the, you know, the the autofocus tricks, which is great for like, you know, if I was working, but it's boring, you know, because yeah. it's like I grab the camera and I just aim it and it just does what it needs to do. For the most part, obviously, I, I have some part in that process, but, yeah, you know, it's it's the process is becoming more boring and yeah. it, and and less less engaging, you know, and again, I use that car analogy. It's like you want to drive that that six shift car yeah like you know or you want to drive the automatic you know reliable car and there's you know i you know i, I if i was shooting a job I'm, i want this one i want automated yeah. i want the best it can be but like for my personal like i don't want to take this like if i'm going somewhere like for fun i normally yeah. don't take this unless i'm thinking content 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 mm -hmm. youtube instagram content you know i want something else to create and and, and then again remember how like you know they say smartphones are taking over The reason why smartphones will never be like take the place of a camera because it's it's okay the process of taking a photo is more than just yeah. pressing a button it's who wants to take pictures pictures with a phone nobody mm. it doesn't make you feel part of the process it, it's not engaging yeah. the ergonomics no like there's a reason why pe people this is a hobby people people pick up cameras this is a hobby it's like now you feel like you're part of a group yes you know? like yeah i'm creating something it's manual like Yeah, so it's That's yeah. So interesting what you just mentioned because you're right. Uh, on top of the the group with other people with a camera, every time I grab my phone, I feel like I'm disconnecting myself from my surroundings. But that's because of everything that's built in the phone, right? The the apps, the connection, the messages, and so it it like you don't have that intentionality of being like I'm taking just photo and I'm with you guys. There might be a notification that pops up, a call that comes in, anything, you know, that can distract you. And for a time I had my, I had my Xperia as a separate phone camera, you know, it's like small and, but there's nothing except my camera there. And, and that, that made it like a super slim camera. It was actually very enjoyable, but um, yeah, that process is so interesting. So what, what's your go-to camera outside of, um, outside of work like what would you use oh is this oh so this is me when i'm supposed to i'm gonna keep the x100vs out of stock everywhere by talking oh. about them again no it's the podcast it's not youtube video oh okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding no, i i was just kidding but yeah um i i like a i, I like a camera that that is just Again, I shoot JPEG. I don't want to shoot raw. I don't, if I'm shooting for uh -huh. fun, I don't want to process yeah. my images. To me, that, that, that takes away the fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to shoot it as it is. 
And that's yeah. why I never picked up the Leica. That's why I never even tried the Leica Q because it I is there's no point in me picking it up. And I love the design. Trust me, I love it. I get it, but I don't want to process my photos. And Fuji allows me to just shoot and pick my pick my my simulation and shoot right then and there. And I got my JPEG, and that's all I want to do with the photo mm -hmm. and for fun. Like that's all I want. That's interesting. I never saw that like that. Uh, I will suggest to you to pick up a Leica monochrome. It just does black and white. The sensor yeah, yeah, won't even do color. And yeah, I've, I've tried seen... it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is slightly addictive. But I don't know how long I would use it for, but I could see myself just like being everywhere or like just shooting with it a lot yeah. and never having to think. But I don't know how much I would use the photos, uh, if I'm super honest. That's 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 awesome. What inspires you when you're when you're shooting, preparing shoots? How what's inspiration for you? Where do you think it comes from for you? Inspiration. Where does my inspiration come from, man? That's a hard one because I'm constantly trying to break out of like a rut, right? I feel like I'm always constantly trying to break out of a rut. What do I what do I do to inspire myself? Um, I you know what I think I think I don't man, what what inspires me? I think Okay, I, yeah, that, that's actually a really hard one. I don't know what inspires me. I think looking back and looking like where I was and where I am now and just how like, I'm just like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop. I refuse to stop. I, mm -hmm. It's one of those things. Yeah, like I just look back where where I was and where what I thought I was gonna be when I was a kid and just not having, I didn't have much, much of a drive back then. And the fact that I'm like, I'm not gonna quit now. I've come too far. I've come way too far. Like, and I just push myself out of it all the time, you know, but it, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to find inspiration nowadays because everything's been done. You know, it's, mm. it's social. Everything's been done. It's like, it's scrolling to social media. It's just all the same stuff. Now it's all, everything's the same. So have you found any place site magazine that that's slightly different from what you would see on social media? Honestly, no, no, no. Pinterest is like my my go to place for like mm. ideas and inspo. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. I never use Pinterest. Um, tell us about Pinterest. I'm curious for photographers. Like, yeah, you, how how do you use it? Well, it's it's pretty cool because if you just have a concept or like a, a, a any kind of theme, you type it in there. Yeah, and you just start scrolling, and it's like a it has all there has so many different kinds of like content uh, again and then if you click that one and you click the next one then it'll suggest a bunch of things very similar to that so mm. and so like you go down the rabbit hole screenshot screenshot say and, and yeah you can actually come up with some pretty cool stuff versus on um, instagram instagram shows you what instagram wants you to see mm. and a lot of the times i go through instagram and i start to feel bad about myself because i'm like wow these people are out here killing it crushing it making some creative stuff and I'm sitting here doing nothing, you know, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And, and so I end up feeling worse yeah. than I normally, but it Pinterest, you kind of go in with like, okay, like with some ideas. Yeah. So it's, it's cool. yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I, I, I don't think about, I used Pinterest when I was a wedding photographer and I was actually posting stuff to like show people, but, uh, Oh, that's awesome. I'll check it out. And then, well, for anyone, who doesn't know it there will be a link in this description and the show notes you can find them at ptl.fm forward slash podcast but uh it's it's interesting uh pinterest i know is big and uh for some reason i i never really <laughs> tap into it when it comes to instagram you you mentioned you you feel bad after you you scroll a bit or, or you spend too much time is it because you saw a panda take an amazing photo while sneezing and then you're like damn it if pandas can do it what am i doing <laughs> <laughs> no no man no, um, I, no i wish i would no no it's i think you know exactly what i'm talking about i feel like a lot of creators go through that you, you just compare yourself to other people you know mm -hmm. you compare yourself and you see what other people are creating and you're like damn like people out here are actually really crushing it you know like there's a hung yeah. people are hungry out here and they're creating some really unique stuff and i can't even find the time or the energy to try to do something you know similar to that yeah and it just makes me feel bad because now I'm comparing myself, I start to feel bad. Like, damn, like 
I, I feel like now I feel like inferior to yeah. or I, I feel like, uh, yeah. So a lot of that happens. And um, yeah, those comparative feelings that it's just, it just, come, it just happens. Like for example, when we all drop a video on YouTube, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, most of it, I can't watch everyone. I can't watch everyone else's video. I don't watch it. I don't yours? watch everyone. I barely. Did no. You, did you watch like, I barely? Huh? Did you watch? Ours? I haven't. I haven't yet. Like, yeah. because I disconnect myself because yeah. if I look at, see, like, for example, if I watch your videos and I know yeah. I do occasionally kick your videos and watch because you're entertaining, but even you sometimes, Pierre, because yeah. you have qualities that I envy, like yeah. the way you can and just your energy and even your photography bro like i'm sorry but your photography is actually like you you always kick my butt even in in portraits right in the streets because you're just you're just good bro like you're you're freaking good and like i'll see your video sometimes and i'll i'll think like damn man like pierre's just on a different level like for me you're like what i would want to be as a creator you know mm. like in, you're so versatile right and it's like and being able to just do things on the go and just mm -hmm. be more spontaneous would make would make it my job easier on me too. Yeah. But so like I feel so a lot of the times I avoid other creators' videos because I compare myself or, or like I want so I wish I had this or that. Yeah. And then yeah. So well, thank you for the compliment, first of all. I want to address that. Uh, I've, always, I've always told you that, bro. You know, because that you means are, that means a beast. lot. Um, especially because I admire your work too. So that that resonates um or that touches me the other part is i 100 percent understand that comparing feeling uh we all i think we all have it it's a natural behavior I almost i would say it's like make sure your house is safe for the storm so you check the neighbor's house and if all the neighbors have worse houses you're like oh it's okay if the storm mine <laughs> 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 oh, it's like fine. when you pike you you I don't know if you've ever biked in Chicago, but when you're going to uh, park your bike and lock it, the one thing you want to make sure is that everyone else has worse locks than you, because that means you will be the last to get picked up. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know those struggles. Um, So that's a funny thing. That's but funny. Yeah. You're not trying to find others to be worse, but I think it's inspiring in a way, but it also can loop into a bad spiral of like, oh no you know like they're better blah 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 and and it's nice to see our chatter you know like the that that part of us that's like always denying what we have accomplished and what we're doing and like etc have you what's your relationship with social media and as a consumer for you have you did you follow that trend i can't remember when it was like a year ago two years ago where everyone was like delete hashtag delete apps or like phone with no apps i can't remember yeah yeah well i don't watch tv so youtube is usually my tv okay and i watch a lot of non-photography stuff as well you know cool. um uh i'm big i watch a lot of tiktok as well and which i try to get off of because they know me they know you so well you know the algorithm keeps me on there but I, I do a lot of tiktok a lot of yeah a lot of photography like i said youtube is my tv yeah uh but i stay i stay off instagram a lot though again because i get that feeling on instagram because the truth is, man, there are so many talented people out here dude, that that don't get the recognition and yeah. because and the, the, that that they deserve and or I feel like it's timing, you know, yeah. like and I feel like there's so many creative people out here doing killing it, crushing it, man. It's like it's best not just to to see that <laughs> because then I'm like now I feel bad, you know, like now I start to compare it to myself, you know. So mm -hmm. it it is one of those things. I stay off Instagram. I go on YouTube for the most part. You know, but Can I switch gear and ask you a question uh, that's more on the personal side. What, so, how, how has your relationship or as a father, if you can expand more on how many kids you have and stuff, but changed since you left um, the your previous job and, and you turned into YouTube, how was it? And what has it changed your relationship? And how did your kids think about it? what did they think about that also or how do they see you nowadays yeah so multi-sided question sorry <laughs> yeah no no so i mean so i have a stepson he's he's 20 now mm -hmm. uh, he's 20 yeah uh and then I, my, my daughter's nine um i can't say that i can't say that the relationship has changed or anything like that um i think my daughter thinks it's cool 
that but but she also says troll just like me like we can never like compliment each other all we do yeah. is just troll each other so she's like oh you get no you get no views or you know like she would like troll yeah. like literally troll me but for the most part it none of that really matters so, like we don't talk about it we don't bring it up we're just mm -hmm. like um i think the only the only part the hard part is is when because when you're a creator you're or entrepreneur or creator you're constantly your brain is just going like this all the time then i have i have adhd diagnosed with adhd and my brain just it's a rat wheel just it's like this all the time and so the the hard part about this is that when you're with your kids like when i'm with my daughter sometimes it's hard to turn yeah. this off and actually be present hmm. and actually be there you know because being there being present with her but not actually being there is it's not it's almost like it doesn't count it's yeah. it doesn't count you gotta yeah. you have to mentally be here yeah. she knows the difference and so that's something that i've struggled for you know uh these past couple of years but i've gotten better much better this year or 2022 i got much better with disconnecting nice was it cleaner for you when you had a job for the disconnection like you you're like home forget about work when i worked it was easier to be yeah. present but this whole entrepreneur thing and again the avalanche it just mm. i just feel like i always have to be turned on or thinking about something it's hard yeah. to just not yeah it's hard yeah i know i noticed uh it was much easier to go on holiday when i when i was working uh for corporate than than on my own now yeah and i that's... think it's you and me we're both learning you know and and we're getting better at that But it's so strange, you know, it's like I would you would never give a second thought or you would just go off and you're like, okay, computer's off. I'm done. You know, I like, see you tomorrow. Um, but now it's like, oh, I'm going on holiday. Should I should I make content off of this? You know, like, sh should I like do a, a video because I feel like I wasted a trip without doing a video, you know, all the time, so, all the time, man. That's 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 how. Yeah that's i try to stop my i start I try i've been doing it i've honestly been it's been better mm -hmm. i i tell my brain to you know because again she's growing up so fast dude and it's yeah. like i'm not trying to miss out on this so that's yeah, yeah. so it, it's hard to turn off your brain but um yeah i mean at you know at the same time what's funny is that everyone wants to be an entrepreneur which i love yes. you know i love i i wouldn't i wouldn't change anything but that's one thing i do envy about the the life of a nine to fiver You know, yeah. like the like, like like let's just assume that someone actually likes their job, like yeah. being able to actually disconnect, right, and clock out, actually clock out, you know, and yes. not have to do all the back end taxes, all the logistic stuff that goes with being an entrepreneur. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what, that job don't that that sounds pretty sweet to me sometimes, yeah, you know. But then again, but then you know, of course, that's not how I'm wired anymore. You know, yeah, it's just, yeah, I know. It's like we, were, I think we would last one, not even a week in in an office. Yeah yeah like what are you telling me what to do <laughs> yeah no yeah right right <laughs> no i don't feel like it today so sorry <laughs> yep. no yeah I, i can't do it but i couldn't do it but at times i'm like man i wish it, it sounds it sounds so nice to be able to to disconnect and i feel that 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 pressure of the avalanche you know mm. so yeah that, yeah the, that pressure I, i think you only gotta be in the game to to start feeling it honestly And have you noticed how many more channels there is on photography, you know, over the yeah, years? Well, there's a whole bunch, man. What do you think everyone does? What do you think everyone's mistake is when they're starting? And or what does everyone get wrong while starting on YouTube? Yeah, that's that's a that's a hard one, right? Because. I feel like some people make the mistake and I, I've actually like mentored. So I'm going to go off like this one guy that I mentored. He's a friend of mine yeah. and he, he a very small channel, but he's tried and he's put a lot of effort and thought into it. So he tries to like, Oh, it's almost like emulate like everyone, I guess in your brain, you have like what, what I have to be or what my set has to look like. And mm. it's almost like you're going off of like, okay, so if I have a nice YouTube set and everything looks nice, I'll get followers. And the thing is that the thing is that it's it's not about it's not about it's not about that because we're everyone's desensitized to that. Everyone has a nice camera, yeah. everyone has a nice YouTube set. It's it's about like how how knowledgeable you are in a certain field, right? So like my friend is not like a, like super knowledgeable even in the one topic that he's talking about. 
and it, he he goes about it like, oh, everyone learn with me, you know, like I'm gonna just try this. Yeah. The problem with YouTube is that people, unless you unless you have this ultra charismatic personality, people go to certain people for different things, you know, mm -hmm. and and if you're if you're really good and you're really knowledgeable in in a specific topic, you know that you have an advantage you know yeah. um but i think I, I think everyone goes into it thinking that it's i can if i can look like a youtuber i can be one mm. if, if my set's nice my lighting's right everything's good here no you, you're like you look like everyone else you, so like you have to stop like, so i feel like people fall into the trap of trying to look like all of us you know or like, like yeah. all of, you have to try to be different in your own way. You have to present in a different way. You have to try to be different and stand out. So that's true. And then I, I'll add to that. I've seen a, a pitfall that happens is following too much the audience and the algorithm, which is let's say you have something that breaks out right, and it's great. You're gonna be like, I'm gonna do more of this, but suddenly you get like pin down slowly more and more and more and you almost some even actors talk about that where you become a caricature cari cari uh, bleh, 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 at all <laughs> uh caricature car well i can't say it it's Copycat? coming out in french no or uh, caricature it's coming character. out in french yeah you're becoming the character that you're you're playing you know in the sense where <clears throat> let's say manny tomorrow you're like you throw a video and it's like really sticky and everyone's like 15 million views but in that you were like really aggressive in your video you know you're like whoa sony is terrible fuji is terrible burn all the cameras you make a fire in your studio and you burn them all i don't know but you Let you get burn. rewarded oh wow everyone's watching and now so the guy the people will go and and be like okay i gotta do more of this you know and suddenly, next thing you know, it's, the guy's like creating giant fires of cameras in the lakefront of Chicago. It's it's a bad example, but that you, I think you got the idea. And I, I think that's what a lot of people for me miss is, hey, it's an, an algorithm that's going to try to reinforce every single behavior that you're showing. So please be careful if that resonates with people. And that's not you. That's not truly you, who you are. Don't don't try not to follow the path, you know. Yeah. So basically, chasing, chasing. Uh, yeah. Just like, ch like just chasing the high. Like yeah. Just continue chasing the high. Yeah, and you because, can't. Yeah. Because yeah. it's you can't if it's not sustainable. If it's not something that is sustainable, it's like, you know, I I see what I see what you're saying. It's like um, you got to just. It's almost like, you know, stay true to yourself, but, you know, it's kind of, it sounds cliche, actually. Let me say it a different way. It's almost like, um, um, you, you, okay, you got to, you got to think the long game in a yeah. sense in this, because again, remember I told you it's the, aval it's never ending. It's, you have to think that if you're going to be in this, you have to think the long game, unless, yeah. you know, you have a short plan or something. I don't know, but you have to think end game because the short game this does not work on youtube it does not work the short game manny just one last video and we're out let's make a million and we we leave yeah imagine that right right you know what i'm saying like yeah it doesn't work like that yeah one like one like one like bank heist and and we're out for real yeah for right real. Imagine. Dude, just the last yeah. one yeah bank heist i know that's like the opposite of what this is all about you know yeah this is very 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 long term no i love that it's true and you gotta think about your brand over the years or like or, or, or who you are and how you want people to know you even for me you know one of the pitfall was like street photography right i love travel photography and like traveling and sharing more etc i don't want to do just street photography i love underwater photography and you mentioned versatility but that's where I even got caught up at some point where I was like street, 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 street. It's working, you know, it's great. It works. Maybe it works for your business. But at one point I'm like, dude, I, I want to, I want to go shoot underwater. I want to go shoot, you know, here. I want to be in a heli, whatever it is, you know, um, yeah, man. and how do you weave that into it? And again, you could just think about it as a business and be like, this business is only about street photography. All the rest is going to be my passion projects and I, it doesn't go anywhere. 
I don't know. Uh, just like anything else, just like anything, if you start making money on it, it starts to feel like a job eventually. And I love taking portraits and, on you know, it's fun. But of course, just like anything else, like when you start making money on it now, it now starts to feel like a job. And yeah. there's times that I don't want to do it. You know, there's some there's times that I want to talk about something else. But yeah, to the price, you know, so. And you might be providing for your family just to add another pressure. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, um, yeah. I want to be mindful with your time. Uh, yeah, Mary. I got to pick up my daughter soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me just ask one last question here and we can go two routes. So do you want to go towards a business route or a personal route? We said business? Business. Or oh, yeah. So let's, let's do business. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Let's do personal, I, I, I talk too long. That's the thing. So business is fast. Okay. Business. What what would be the one thing you've learned uh, through your YouTube journey and as a photographer also that you see a lot of people get wrong when it comes to the business side of of YouTube? Yeah, of YouTube, and I'll extend it to creators in general because right now the other apps right. are very relevant too. Yeah, I mean, see that one right there. I could, I, I could think of so many different things, right? But the, I think the most important one is one that is it. It's the 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 first one is that don't sell out in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Like, thing is that again, if you're in this sort of long game, don't don't start promoting bullshit products just because they're paying you. You know, it's your first paycheck. It's there are everyone's going to be throwing you money if they see value and they're going to throw you money and don't sell out and don't promote crap that you actually don't like because in like again in tech well okay i guess my 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 advice is integrity is everything in this in this in this industry and it's like if you just shill and sell out for anything people people aren't gonna really take your word mm -hmm. on on when it actually matters you know, and I feel like when people, when when people feel like you're genuine and you're not trying to promote just anything to them, you yeah. know, you have their trust, you have people's trust, which is so important because now when like, you know, it, you, you need, you need, you need integrity, integrity needs to be very, very good. And your integrity will allow you to make more money in the long run. Cause mm -hmm. when you sell products, when you have things, people know that you actually stand by this. Yeah. You know? So, that's a good one. That to me, that's you know. Is there any? Um, oh, sorry, just a bonus. Is there a crunchy one? Is there any placement or anything you ever picked up that you kind of regret it or you had a really hard time saying yes to, but you still did? Man, well, I don't know. I I guess the one for me is I didn't. I I regret not not. I regret not selling products and courses when my channel was hot because mm. everyone, their channel can go up and down, like in terms of hotness. I feel like my time when my channel was, was kind of blowing up, I did not capitalize on that. Mm. I just made videos and co collected revenue, ad revenue when I could have been finally making my portrait courses and I could have made so much more money and been not have to do any sponsors, you know, mm. through that time or going forward. I didn't capitalize on when when you're when you're building momentum you got to capitalize on that momentum because the momentum doesn't last forever it doesn't That's so true. just like a tv show like 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 you know it only goes so many seasons and i feel like it can it kind of that kind of happens with viewers you viewer fatigue you know yeah. and they stop clicking on your videos or they go you know they're not watching youtube anymore so you know you got to capitalize That's if, if you want to make money that's true. Yeah. I remember Casey Neistat saying exactly the same thing about merch. He's like, my biggest regret with YouTube is not dropping t-shirts when I was daily blogging. Yeah. You He's see what like, I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, I regret not putting out presets way earlier, yeah. putting out support your courses because it would have made my life easier now, you know? That's what so. I tell everyone. Like, we, we have friends in common. Zero email list, nothing. And I'm like, dude, like, how are you surviving with this? You know, like you're relying 100%. You're literally hanging from a branch that's cracking slowly. Yeah. Which, then, which is, which is, I need to, I, I I'm, I'm going to expand pretty soon, you know? So yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Well, everyone, Manny, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thanks for sharing everything. Where do you want to send people off to? Do you want to direct them somewhere? Um, you could check out um, Pierre's course. He did not pay me to say this. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, um, well, Manny Ortiz everywhere. You okay. know? Yeah, Manny, Manny Ortiz, Ortiz, YouTube, Instagram. And then you have a really cool... Uh, is that called an umbrella? That's how well I am in studio. Beauty dish. Yeah, uh, light modifier. That you partnered with the Westcott to create. Yes, yeah, sir. And that was really awesome. So yeah, everyone, thanks. many Ortiz on social media. And many, thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.